Hey there, welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss a crazy story of how a gift from school children let the Soviets spy on the American embassy without being detected. Was the great seal bug discovered accidentally after seven years? How it functions, operates? Too many questions, so let's get started. Between the 40s and 50s, the world witnessed the end of a black era with World War II and the beginning of a new era of international relations. Countries disappeared and new countries appeared. Enemies became friends and some friends became enemies. Tensions between the United States and its unlikely ally in the Soviet Union persisted throughout World War II. Therefore, they have to find a way to bring peace and build diplomatic, economic, and political relations. And among the customs used in political diplomacy is the tradition of gift-giving between heads of state, is a long-established practice which continues to represent peaceful diplomatic relations. What happened is on August 4th, 1945, a group of Russian children, the future generation, presented a carved wooden replica of the Great Seal of the United States to a Averil Harriman the U.S. ambassador. The Americans examined the gift for fear of electronic listening devices inside, but it had no power pack of its own, no wires that could be discovered, and no batteries to wear out. As Robert Brown said in his book, the triumph of the great seal bug was its simplicity. The gift is a gesture of friendship to the USSR's World War II ally, was hung in the ambassador's official residence at Spaso House in Moscow. It neither occurred to him nor his security team that this gift had been designed by a genius of the 20th century, which will turn into the worst spy scandal in both countries. The actual Russian bug was developed by Lev Sergeyevich Terman, best known for his invention of the theremin, a musical instrument with a proximity sensor. Lev lived in the United States under the name Leon Theremin. But just like what Theremin's wife declared that he was taken by the Russian and forced to go back to Russia in 1938, Theremin was later put to work at a Sharashka, a secret laboratory in the Gulag camp system, along with other detained scientists and engineers. The mission he was asked to do was to invent a highly sophisticated listening device that could never be detected and indeed, that succeeded and he invented a resonant cavity microphone called the Thing also known as the Great Seal Bug. The purpose of this invention is to find an effective way to spy on an American ambassador without anyone being able to uncover the spy device. So how does it function and operate? The device consisted of an antenna and a cylinder with a thin membrane that acted as a microphone. Soviet agents stationed across the street from the Spaso house would turn the device on by focusing a radio signal on it which then bounced back to their radio receiver. When the ambassador or anyone else in the study spoke, the sound waves caused the membrane to resonate and altered the signal that returned to the Soviets, allowing them to hear the conversation. To bring you closer to the idea, the same technology that is used in credit cards, passports, and identity cards is called RFID, Radio Frequency Identification. With the help of this technology, you can pay for purchases by just waving it over the RFID reader. And this type of card can take a lot of important data, which allows identifying more information just by passing it in front of the reader, such as the date, time, and accurate information about purchases such as size and type and other data. Nowadays, this technology is widely used because of its cheap cost and small size. We find it in clothes, books, and also in containers. Not only that, the chip can be implanted under your skin that contain the same kind of technology that people use on a daily basis. From key fobs to unlocked doors, public transit card or bank cards. In fact, the microchip was first implanted into a human back in 1998. However, a gift from school children let the Soviets spy on the US for seven years. The State Department only became suspicious that the Soviets had developed this novel bug in the early 1950s, when British and American military radio operators monitoring Soviet military radio traffic independently and accidentally picked up the voices on their receivers that appeared to belong to their respective diplomats. The device appeared to be hidden inside the wooden carving behind the ambassador's desk, and resembled a cylindrical microphone with an antenna rod connected to it. 
tiny holes in the wood under the eagle's beak, guided the sound to the membrane of the bug that was mounted just behind it. And the strange thing is, it didn't have its own power source and was not connected via wires. The ambassador immediately removed the device and placed it under his pillow so that it would not be retrieved by the Soviets. Then it was shipped to Washington the next day for examination. The discovery of the bug was kept secret for many years. Until 1960, on the 1st of May, the Soviets had shot down an American U-2 spy plane over Soviet airspace, as a result of which the Soviet Union convened a meeting of the United Nations Security Council, accusing the Americans of spying. In order to demonstrate that spying was mutual, the Americans decided to reveal the Russian bugging device. At this point, the Russians came under criticism and attack, as it's shown in this video. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that spying on another country in order to protect national security is legal? We're waiting for your answer in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button so you can receive more content like this. Thank you for watching, and until next time, take care and stay safe.